Hit them with the intro, FC. Hit them with the intro. I wouldn't even know where to begin. Matt laying under the daggone car. Well, a man Mason sitting in the chair not doing nothing. As I've been usual. working all day. Wait, wait, hold on. Hold on. There's I something I wrong with this picture. It's, it's backwards. It's not reversed. Yeah, yeah. There is something wrong. They didn't tap the f***ing block with the right tap. Daddy, chill. What the hell is even that? Oh, oh, are you tapping? Yeah. Damn, we can't say the F word that early in the video, Matt. Guys, welcome back to another video here. We are red lobstering again. Uh, today is kind of one of those days where we've done... We've put, we've put a lot of thought and stuff into this, uh, made made a couple moves, but really we were just like restocking, ordering parts, kind of aligning everything so everything will go together like butter here shortly. I'd say that's pretty, what do you say that's pretty accurate? Like we're, we're not in the buttery stage, but we're just before it. Oh yeah, the tap's going in nice and buttery. That is a hell of a tap. Yeah, I don't know what. Look at that arm. I, I know, dude, hold on. Let's see that. Let's see that. Are you using that arm? Yeah. I used to use them both of them. I don't know what threads this is, but it's just not. <laughs> <laughs> what thread is that? No. Uh, that is a healthy size tap. Shout out to TKM Performance for letting us borrow their tap. TKM Performance, where you go to tap ass? No, no. To tap blocks. To tap blocks. Matt, when's the last time you tapped a block inside the frame rails? Um, I mean, I've done, I've done some tap work, but usually nothing like this. This would definitely be a... Uh, outside of the block, preferably when it's not assembled because there's like metal shavings. Typically between the A and B pillars, not between the frame rails, right? <laughs> okay. Damn. Well, she's going in there one way or another. I mean, honestly, if we have oh, to. Yeah, I mean, it's it's going. It's just cutting a lot of threads. We're gonna have options. Oh, dude, we gotta get that truck. Hey, hey, you wanna run up there and grab that truck? Sure. My boy, I forgot about it. Yeah, I got you. Come on. We got the fleet manager and the director of tanks. It's a promotion for me. AK, AK, when they're grouped together, we call that shit the bottom of the barrel. Boom. Roasted. Hey, that is definitely the B team right yeah. there. Look <laughs> that red tacky. Oh, I got you, my boy. So, Matt? What's the likelihood of us having to take that motor out and put it in there? Oh, God. No, the issue with the small block Ford stuff is we could take that motor out and put it in here. Absolutely nothing would fit. Nothing. So... You just you'd be better off, honestly. I hate to say it, just to LS swap it. Do you agree at this point? Yeah, never. Really? He's a Ford man. You think he's ever going to admit that? All right. You tell me this thing with the Black Sheep Stage Three. Oh, I, I ain't saying it wouldn't be fast. Matt, would you rather this motor in there right now or Black Sheep Stage Three? The a small block Ford or the Speedmaster? <laughs> wow. We we have made some very good improvements. If you guys saw the last video, we got the old pump, old pump, old pump on there. Fuel fuel filter mounted. I can't talk. We got some filters. I'm not even talking. We can get some filters. We got some fittings ordered up. We got those ordered up from Brown and Miller. Yeah, I sent him an email. Oof. He said he was gonna let me know. Oof. We're running out of time here on Friday, which means you have to have everything. We do a lot of unnecessary order. I wouldn't say unnecessary ordering. We pay a lot for overnight shipping, but one step above that is we just send someone to go pick it up. Like David this morning woke up at 8 a.m., hopped in one of the trucks, drove an hour and a half T-cam to pick up the tap, and drove back. That's that's what you call, like, what would you call that? I'd call it dedication. No, I'd call that that TKM actually works on Fords if they had a tap for that. <laughs> It's actually a 12RB tap, not special. Yeah, well, you right. know what? This is not a typical yeah. tap. No, well, I mean, if you're if you're manufacturing product, yes. But normally you wouldn't keep one of these on hand because usually you wouldn't have to do this. It should come like this from the factory. It should come with the right threads from the factory. You know, no, it's, it's a testament to the team here. I mean, David ate to wake up at 8 o'clock. I think you get him up at 8, you've done something, and he's not sitting in the chair. Of course, he was sitting in the seat driving up there, so. Listen, the same. people don't understand how much goes on in the background. How many times in the group do I send a text, hey, who's available to go here? A lot. I mean, there's been times people drive all the way down to Atlanta to go to Summit to pick up parts to bring because we want them, like, right then and there. Because you forgot to order them the night before overnight. I mean, I've got to go on a plane before and go get parts. I mean, it'd be like that sometimes. The, the Do you remember when Travis got dropped off and said, hey, carry these down there? To oh, yeah. Travis literally, Travis was working over at the jewelry store, and he's like, man, I don't know if I'm going to go to Lights Out. It was Lights Out last year. He's like, man, I don't know if I'm going to go to Lights Out. And then Chris kicks the door in because I'm like, Chris, I broke a rocker arm. He's like, where's the spare? I'm like, in the shop. So uh, Chris was like, hey, Travis, go over to the shop, grab the rocker arms. You're heading down to Georgia. 
at like five o'clock at night. It's like a nine hour drive. Travis just hop, came over here, got the rocker arms, drove down through the night, shows up at like, I don't even know when, like three or four in the morning, yeah. crawls into the toter, passes out, wake up in the morning, have the rocker arms, put that shit together, go racing. And that's, that, that is, you guys hear me say it a lot. I'm like the LS nasty team getting it done. It's not just Matt tapping a block inside the frame rails. It's not just, you know, FC talking some smack in the lanes. It's, it's a full team effort. I mean, it's, it really takes everyone. Yeah. It's not me rapidly disassembling cars. No. Yeah. No, it's, it, listen, when Matt wrecks them, we wreck them as a team. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. We were all there together. <laughs> He, who hauled it back on the open trailer? Hauled it back, yeah, exactly. <laughs> who took him to the hospital? Wes took him to the hospital. We took him to the hospital the second time. Right out of the hospital, we took him to Hooters. Damn, you trying to go back? Yeah, <laughs> oh. I don't, that was that was horrible. That, that Hooters was that Hooters was not a good experience. No. Look at that dude. Yeah, if, there's ever, if there's ever a time to wear a hat, it would yeah. be now. Yeah, I know. There's a bunch of metal shavings. I got it out there somewhere. I need a haircut. I was going to say that was... You want me to get the buzzers? I mean, I'm to that point. I'll go get them. How far in is that tap gone? Um, I don't know. It's... It's cutting a lot of threads, so, like, this obviously was not tapped to the correct... But is it knocking down the correct amount of threads where you'll be able to thread something in there? Yeah, no, I think so. <laughs> De hey, have you ordered the diaper overnight just in case this doesn't hold? That no, we haven't got the diaper yet, but we'll, we'll have a diaper here. That's not a question. We'll be diapering, dude. That's for Wait, sure. Are you going to put a diaper on this? I mean... At least a Walmart shopping bag, you know, grocery bag we can put over that. All right, I want you... If you ever been to a race and you forgot your tire pressure gauge and you had to ask somebody in the lanes for a tire pressure gauge hit the subscribe button oh, i like it i like it yeah. and you any of you guys that watch my my man grand thumb know what that's from oh fitting right here all right so we've been tapping that ass Dude, you're all over the place, right? Is he not all over the place right now? Wow, wow. He's all over. Are you all right? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm good. He's been up frustration right here. I know. The whole God time. dang. Boy, throwing the words out. God right. dang. So, uh... Tapping it. <laughs> my, uh... My boy over at uh, Speedmaster Ling, he, uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I'm gonna be the censorship here. Go ahead and you speak. Yeah. When you hear me go, <laughs> we're, we're, we're trying to get this tapped out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the threads just don't, they're not threading. Like, they they, they use the wrong tap? Yeah, normally threads, if it's the correct one, they will align with each other, and if it's incorrect, they won't. And this was, I don't know what they tapped this to, but. It was probably like a tap they just pulled out of a box somewhere and they're like close yep. enough <laughs> looks like it because it ain't it i wonder if they had a box like we have with the drill bits around here there's just a yeah, box it, of taps it could have been the right tap it just was like crooked or half of the tap was missing and they just kind of shoved it in there with a drill or something or a machine i don't know what they use over there like, i'm sure the nine-year-old that tapped it didn't know what he was doing <laughs> <laughs> <You're so> <laughs> <laughs> damn listen 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 just because he's nine doesn't mean that he can't produce quality product <laughs> yeah i mean for real here look at you doing you got like you're just like a big nine-year-old yeah you're right all right product. insert the picture of mason showing off the absolute extreme performance of a male put it right next to him oh. here oh, yeah yeah reenact oh, it boy. dude it's like the fact that you could just just re is that comfortable for you i was it did not look comfortable it just stretches it out, you know? you're in there i'm in there so this is a big uh this is a big crisis averted yes shout out to t-camp performance kevin mullins the whole team up there the whole crew really getting it done guys tap guys tap uh, so we did order some stuff from Brown and Miller. We have the crimper here. Everything but 16 AN. So we're going to order a couple 16 AN stuff off of ATEC. The real big 16 AN stuff, the fuel feed from the tank to the pump, I've always just done out of like Vibrant line. It's usually straight, doesn't have any bends. Uh, I don't know if it's me being cheap. I really feel like it's not me being cheap uh, because the price difference is not that much. It's just that 
I've never done any 16AN stuff with the dies and all that stuff. I think we have the dies for the 16AN. I'm not quite sure, but I'm I'm not going to get everything here and be like, oh, I don't have the, the dies and the, everything we need to do it. So we'll run the uh, the feed to the pump with like Vibrant Line, then everything else will be Brown and Miller. Did you swap these out? So these are the right fittings. Yep. These are tens. Yep. So, so I'll give them like a brief no, overview. 12s. So I got. I think we did an overview yesterday. We're we doing another quick overview. Yeah, do a quick overview of how it's gonna go. So now, like we we already we know where the fuel tank's going and everything like that. Bam! Fuel tank. Fuel tank to pump. Pump to filter. Filter to rail. Give me that. Hold on. Give oh. me. Give me the little like. When oh, you do, okay, yeah. do one of those. Tank. Yep. To pump. Yep. From the pump to inlet for the fuel filter. Out, 120 degree. This one's gonna be 12 in, 10 out, because you got 10 rails, there ain't no point going 12 to 10, like 10 will flow a lot. All you guys out there are like, eh, 10 won't work. You're full of shit. <laughs> what about like the, like, look at the size of this fuel rail. This is like a dash eight. Yeah, no, it's MPT, so it's not even like a true, like the, the port fitting, like a 10 port fitting, the rail diameter would be bigger, but still not worried about it. 120 to dash 10 line. So we're gonna go 12 to 10. Bam, right in there. Crossover in the back. Regulated, out of the regulator, down, over, fuel tank, done. Fuel system. What about everyone that's like, oh no, you have to Y. You have to equally feed the rails. Bullshit again. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lie. I'm gonna run the Glizzard single feed with a dash eight fuel rails. Oh yeah, I 100% do it. These guys are like, oh, you need a dash 24 feed and you know a 16 ORB fitting that wires into a two dash 32. Like you don't need all that shit. You could just do single dash 10, single dash 12. And for anybody to say that it doesn't work, we will literally prove you wrong. What about a mechanical injected car? Everything on a mechanical injected car, nothing's bigger than a dash 10. They're making 4,000 horsepower. Yeah, no, you don't need. Uh, you don't need a 12 size, like a 12 feed, like slick race a 12. You don't need anything larger than that. That is plenty large enough. You don't need to Y it. You don't need to do that. You don't like, it's not like, oh, this injector is going to get starved. If you get to the point where this injector has fuel and it's using so much fuel that this one doesn't, you got other problems. Like, you're just not going to, like, if you just won't use that much fuel, even on a methanol car. So then you got guys that we size it that way for methanol and then on gasoline they're running the same size shit or bigger and i'm like you know gasoline's using half of the fuel consumption so you need half the pump half the lines half the flow you don't need you don't have to flow the 40 gallons a minute you got to think our Dude, pump, all of all of uh Hank is dash eight, and everyone's like, "Oh my god, it needs to be bigger." That's no, it's only it's, it's sixteen hundred horsepower, it's like, eighty-five dash eight. Yeah, thir it's you know it's thirty percent more fuel volume than gasoline. I, I would push dash eight. I don't know how far, probably two thousand horsepower, especially on the eighty-five. Um, yeah, I think so. The pump, like a really badass mechanical fuel pump's flowing, you know, thirteen, fourteen gallons a minute. How much fuel do you think you can push through a dash ten line at? 150 psi that thing would be like unrestricted that thing will probably flow like 40 gallons a minute at that kind of pressure like it would flow an absolute metric ton of fuel so and to look at your orifice size inside your regulator and you don't have an issue like the regulator isn't like if you needed to flow that much that when that ball valve in there it's just a it's just a ball in a seat and it has no kind of surface area it's not even flowing that much so it's not a restriction, so don't don't get all hung up on you got to run like Mondo fuel lines because you're just wasting money. Yeah, the the larger the fitting, the larger the cost. So I mean, yeah. you guys can suction yeah. side. I will say dash twelve. We went really fast on dash twelve suction. Sixteen's better. I'm not gonna say twelve can't get it done. Twelve can't go three the eighties. Um, Sixteen never have an issue. Um, any kind of suction side, like your suction from your your pump, like we're going to be running a ten feed, so you're coming out of your pump with a ten. Uh, this is oil pump now, not fuel pump. Yeah, yeah, it's oil pump on this side. Uh, so we're going to be running ten to the clear view, and then out of the clear view, it'd be ten to the block and everything. Because again, the motor doesn't the motor doesn't flow sixty gallons a minute of you know oil. So 
uh, it, uh, it doesn't have to be sized um, that large you're just just wasting money and more weight there, there's a lot of disadvantages running oversized lines so but we got our fuel filter here we mounted it um, we checked everything made sure that like you know this will unscrew all the way nice and close to the bottom so whenever you can get it out service it put it back in without having to worry about anything so um, clean setup I'm really glad that I was really nervous about the block you know tapping it getting the tap in there you know is in a bad position don't know what kind of condition the threads are going to be but that other fitting it you know went in there nice and good there's still a lot of thread material so I'm not really concerned about it so um, good to go there uh, let's see what else we've been doing we ordered a bunch of stuff we're just gonna start doing it we'll probably mount the uh, clear view here I wish the motor plate was a little bit taller I know yeah a little less cut out so it's whatever we'll make it work um, do that mount our fuel tank over here it'll be a little busy over here but I still think it's better than having stuff strode everywhere and then two it gives you all the room for your exhaust you don't have to worry about cooking anything um, everything's gonna be mounted right here so be good um, this you guys don't have any idea you would have to change everything when you store we put a different motor in there and went from uh, dry sump to uh, external wet sump and then like had to fix a million things this is kind of where you end up where we're literally like we redid the turbo kit put a new turbo on there redid the charge pipe we're doing all the fuel lines we're doing all the oil system we're essentially building a whole new car yep but and, and too like and there's and and that seems like a lot but to us it's worth it because we've done it before we've had a lot of cars that other people have built and you end up trying to race it like that and you spend more time messing with it than you do or you you, you waste time you go to the track and like the fuel pump the way that everything was i mean it was there was fittings that were like welded together on the inside and jb welded and like you got not a fitting that was cut and then jb welded so like it gave it clearance yeah so there's there's so many things like that that we just don't want it. we don't want if we go race we want to race it and we want to lose because the other guy was faster not because we broke yeah totally agree so um got our belt um everything's good there we got a nice wide belt because we're driving the fuel pump too um got our aviator oil pump so they, they make a lot of different pump bodies this is probably not the ideal pump body for this because they have like ones that exit out the top which is probably be better but this is what we have um they make different blades I this one was ordered for an ls yeah ls so you know we get over here the headers are a little bit different position you know i like the ones like on the bad apple where it's got a single inlet single outlet vertical of each other but they make a different bunch of different pump bodies they make a bunch of different blades um i really like this blade style i think it's like a 34 um you know you put one bolt hole in here and then it's got the pivot so like it, it literally once you get this in here it took two minutes to mount this thing mm -hmm. So, um, we got our pan clearance for our uh, fuel pump in there. Now our, our, our oil pan heater, our turbo drains in there. Yep, we got our turbo drain line done. So, everything looks looking yeah, good. Yeah, we're gonna be able to, uh, we're gonna be able to get it close. Um, like I said, we need some, need some fittings here and there. So that's gonna slow us down a little bit. Um, but we we'll able to get a majority of it. We still got some other parts for the black sheep. <clears throat> We might be able to crank it tomorrow we got some uh saturday delivery stuff coming in from manton so uh ideally you get the black sheep 100 done and wrapped up put all the folks on this where this one's <laughs> just kind of i've been saying it for a while the home stretch like you guys don't understand the last 10 percent of the build is really the longest and it is yeah. like it takes a while just to get it from 10 percent to nine percent because there's so many little things that all need to be done correctly if they're not done correctly they can cause issues elsewhere it's really a time-consuming very important part that you get right yeah and the time you spend doing all the other stuff it's um, it's it you'll it's just a waste like if you don't like I know you see the light at the end of the tunnel and I've seen a lot of people cut a lot of corners at the end just because they're like I'm so close I just want to get it done but trust me don't do that because it will bite you in the ass you'll be at the track something that'll break and you'll go man I wish I I wish I waited another day I wish I spent a little bit more time on this and I didn't just you know throw it together because it it it, it sucks like if you go to the track and you don't have to work on it and it's like you know you just going out there whipping ass with the car that's a good feeling like and if you spend your time devils in the details really go over it. after you build it like we're going to build this thing and then we're going to go over it with a fine tooth comb and check all the bolts make sure it's got lock nuts and lock washers and everything because you'd be amazed how much one bolt 
it can cause problems. Yeah, the, the one thing we did for a place is the bolts for the steering rack. Remember the steering rack bolts came loose? Yep. Like that right there, that will, all of this will be for nothing. Yeah, no, you put it, you put it in the wall and it junks the car and then, you know, just cause of that. And I, I've seen, I've seen people too, like they build brand new cars and they forget to put the, um, set screws in the like the uh steering joints and stuff or you know something's loose or uh you know your torque converter bolts are loose like you know there's a lot going on you know there's there's times where we check something and then something happens or you know mason catches something on fire and we have to run and put it out like you know then we forget about we it forget then, to tighten the lug nuts on the car and do a burnout and they go flying down the track yeah it happens you know yep you know then that, that was a breakdown you know we were all rushing and you know everybody you know I thought you got it, you thought Logan got it, Logan thought I got it. Yep. And Come to find out, the track got it. Yeah. But Jesus, Jesus had us. Yeah. Yeah, he, thanks. He just took the wheel. Imagine if we would have clicked the button on that. that we wouldn't be have, we wouldn't have black sheep no more. No, I think we would have. It would have been, we would have looked like those, all the pictures where the car's like all up in the air and the tires are flying off of it. So. You know, fixing them right, uh, it's like a, a way of life for racing, man. You used to always work on them all night just to go racing the next day. Tear it up. But with the black sheep, man, kind of missed that. We just pull it out the back of the trailer, say, did you change the oil this week? Let's go racing. I'm gonna stop messing. No, we don't change oil. We, we, <laughs> we switch the shapers. But it's, it, it's, like, mean, it's like proven that if you, I know you like we're, we're, taking, we're taking twice as long to do this right. Someone else might have it done already, but we're gonna make that up tenfold. Exactly, I mean, but like I said, I think people that race think that that's a way of life. You work on it all night to go race the next day. Well, it don't everything. have to be that way, no, you know I've what I'm saying? everything like, oh, yeah. cause it's a race car. That's a lie. If anybody tells you it's because of a race car, the only thing that is true about that is the shit doesn't fit. Like, you can spend as much money as you want. The, oh, the second thing that's true is they sound like hell on the inside. Oh, yeah, no. They, you, if you're ever in a fast car, you could get in something like a really, like, top-notch, badass car when you're riding down the return road. You're like, I, I, I'm, I'm afraid to let go of the button because it sounds like I'm in a square-wheeled wagon, but every single time, that's how they sound. They just, that's how they are. But... You know, if somebody like if there's leaking or like this isn't right or that's not like that, that didn't have to be like that. Like some of us have unfortunately came to be acceptable with that. And the parts thing, like the parts not fitting, kind of unacceptable. It's unacceptable. For standard. But everybody, everybody needs to like come together and be like, you know what? I'm tired of working my damn job and working overtime to buy this shit and it doesn't fit like you're doing your job to buy the shit and they're not doing their job to make sure they're putting out a good quality product but then you know there's not some people there's like just a few people i'm not going to name any names i should 2023 but there's there's some stuff that's very very expensive and the quality is just not there and it's not like it can't be there because there's other non you know like certain other motorsports that have similar products that they have wonderful wonderful products it fit amazing and it's just uh somebody out there and they're just like yep that's just how it is and you the end user has to deal with that and it sucks so well, there's your update on the uh the red lobster we're gonna get some parts we're gonna get her knocked out and then uh, hopefully tomorrow we'll have a, a fire up video of the black sheep and uh that would be that'd be great and uh and then you know all of our attention goes over to this guy here we can get this thing knocked out and uh yeah, you, are you excited for Georgia? Yeah, yeah, but I think I made a mistake when I was talking about you might not have to work on this every night. It is a Ford, right? Boom, roasted.